Eamon, do you have a big question? <laughs> big question. Um, yeah, I got a big question for this week. So we got some problems in the WWE uh, in particular. Probably in other places too. Um, there are injuries happening literally everywhere. Every like, week? Like sneeze and sneeze and someone's injured. Like it is – it's getting bad, you guys. Uh, uh, we had the thing with Neville – Two weeks ago, Luke Harper's now out injured with like a – like literally just punched the dude in the corner, torn ACL. <laughs> like that's – and I'm not even joking. Like that's how it happened. Um, so, we're at the Sack Ryder has a WrestleMania match level. Yes. Yeah, we're at that level, <laughs> guys. It's getting serious. Um, we're at so, the, the Lucha Dragons had to be split up into two matches level. Pretty much. So here's the thing. What – can be done. That's simple. My big question. What can be done to curb the amount of injuries that we seem to be getting this whole year in WWE? What can be done? Uh, I, I, I got something, Naaman. Help us, Mike. Figure, tell us what can be done. We need help. <laughs> well, a couple things. Mad Mike from Poughkeepsie, New I, York, by the way, joining us yes. on the line. I, I, I will I will just do one thing because we have a lot of people in here to answer and I'm sure there will be some overlap. Um, I will say better stories. And what? You're, probably, you're probably asking, how do better stories help injuries? Well, you see, if you actually write fucking stories, you don't have to rely on your in-ring product as much as you do. That's Look at the one. Attitude Era. That's a good no, point. no match went longer than ten minutes. That's a really good None point. None of them. Mm-hmm. None of them. Stone Cold Steve Austin won the Intercontinental Championship at SummerSlam with a broken fucking neck that had to be fused, and yet was still on the show every week as the hottest thing, and he didn't wrestle once. He mm-hmm. did promos. He maybe hit a stunner on Vince. Maybe, but he usually just swung a chair. If you have stories and promos and in-ring segments and vignettes and backstage segments, guess what? You don't have to have AJ Styles and Kevin Owens do an almost 35-minute match at the start of Raw. That's true. Not that that's a bad thing, but you don't have to do it every week. If you have more promos and better stories, you can push feuds without in-ring action look at lucha underground i have never seen matanza cueto he is <laughs> my favorite character on the show <laughs> he has physically not been in the temple <laughs> that's, a, that's the power of story oh. that is the power of story the, clo- the closest thing the way he can get po- could have possibly ever gotten injured is if he, eat, he is if he ate a meal too fast and by meal, I mean person. <laughs> um, let me let me for mine just kind of take from that because again, I just had WWE Network on today, and they were doing the Monday Night Wars um, on uh, on McFoley, and they talked about so the, the the famous interview they did with Mankind that kind of turned him face and talked about his his upbringing and everything that led to the Dude Love videos and everything. Right? They mentioned that those vignettes, those interviews, lasted five weeks on Raw. Five weeks. Mm-hmm. That's an entire WrestleMania build. Yeah, I it, and I don't think it led to a direct feud or anything that I recall. It was just, hey, here's no, this about did. this character. Sorg, it absolutely did. Wh- who did that lead to? Uh, the return of Cactus Jack against Triple H. Okay, that led directly to that eventually, but I thought that oh, was... Oh, you mean the, the sit-down no, with no, no. Uh, the JR. Sit-down with JR and they talk about... Oh, okay, no, that didn't, that didn't lead... To anything specifically? No, that was just like kind of a character piece. Actually, no, it led to the creation of Dude Love. Of course, of course. TV, right? That's what it did because that's where they initially talked about it, and um, Foley came out as the corporate guy and attacked Austin as Dude Love. Right, exactly, exactly. So, but just thinking about that, that you know, like they did that, and that was something consistent. Versus then we have well, and this is not something that leads to injuries. But like, like, doesn't it seem like this R Truth Gold Dust thing has been so odd and blink if you missed it in the in the mix of things in the long run versus something mm-hmm. like that? 
um, that, that, that they, they, they paid attention to something like that and so much other stuff that they would have done you know it's like even now I think some of the greatest stuff they've been doing is Dean Ambrose out on the town you know has been a yeah, lot like, of fun him in Cincinnati I don't was know great why they can't book everyone like Brock Lesnar or Dean Ambrose right exactly. Brock Lesnar does not have to show up on screen for six months and if you do a promo or an interview with him where he's talking about blood and sweat and urine everyone's going to be interested in Brock Lesnar. Exactly. Well, I want to get around here so we can get everybody in here and not go too long. Bobby, I just heard you say something. Do you have a, do you have an answer here? Do you have, how are we going to solve problems? I do, but I want to take issue with something you said at the beginning of this by letting the floodgates open. That, that hurts. Oh, I'm sorry. Bobby FJ town from flood town, (laughs) USA and Johnstown PA. Wow. Um, no, um, Bobby's very flood intolerant. I think I think they should not necessarily have an off season, but at least start rotating guys out. Like, right? Have have guys have an allotted time off. Like, you get a three month break. You get a three month break. You get you know, and it'll keep things fresher. I think too, with with certain certain people. Just an idea. I, I, I'm with that. I'm, I'm with the rotation idea. Uh, I've been, I've yeah, been liking that idea, idea for a while. Mm-hmm. I think I mm-hmm. think I think it should be like almost become a corporate's HR policy that you get like two months off in the year, at least. Well, it, it's like uh, that interview with the Miz where he was like, "I kind of hope I get injured or a movie because you get time off and you get that big pop when you come back." Exactly, and you can retool mm-hmm. in the off season, right? Instead of being mm-hmm. a part of the grind, it's just something about that. It's like it's like um, I mean, I'm sure you guys have been this where you've been at a job for so long, and just getting a different job is a big refresher for you, right? I, I think that happens here too because there's no plus, other job to get at this point. Plus, you can write somebody off TV easily, right? Exactly, just like they do on TV. But but with that, but with that, I'm sorry to interrupt. But with that, you have to have a plan B, like in place that quick. You can't, you can't, like, like well, you can't planned. just have a freak injury happen, like, like well, you can uh, plan for Harper. It. Right. What was that? You can plan for the person to be out. Like, you're going to say, well, you won't have this guy for the next three months because he's going to take a break. Okay, the plan, yeah. I, I like that idea. I like the plan being, you know, just get them out, make them happy, get them for the three, like, th- three months seems like, a long time now. Mm-hmm. Maybe two a month. Two, two and two, two and a half. I was just thinking that. like but, I was thinking like a summer break. Yeah. Right. <laughs> On those right. nights. Exactly. So, so, well, so, kind of like a school break. Right. Yeah, so, yeah. so Riz, Almost. Riz, do you have an answer to the big question? So the the big question. Uh, can I get a repeat of the big question? Oh, uh, what can you do? What can we do to keep these injuries from happening in WWE? In in the and you can't, you can't hide the injuries. Mm-hmm. You can't say that you have an injury anymore. And you don't have an injury anymore because everybody can see it. Everybody can tweet about it. Everybody can Facebook it. You're not going to have anybody doing anything. You can't say you don't have an injury to, to have an injury, but you can't, you, you just can't, you can't prevent injuries like this you can't prevent john cena's nose busted open you can't predict sin cara's finger or hand breaking off into five places you can't predict luke harper breaking a leg you can't predict sid's ankle snapping in two you can't predict any Ah. of that what it is it ah (laughs) yeah i don't know i I think you can predict sin cara getting injured though that's a good that's a usual well, the, the original it's, it's usually about every three and a half months. The oh, original singer. Riz, Riz, as, as sort of a side question to that to that question and response. So, do you do you feel that there uh, is a cor- is anything that is correlating to the amount of injuries we have been seeing recently? Do you think, or do you think it's just a case of it's, chance or something? Honestly, it, it's the high the high risk that is increasing in WWE. Mm -hmm. Like before Mm -hmm. we had little to no over the top rope action. We didn't have anybody doing planchas over the top rope or anything like that. We had matches in the ring, which featured submission specialists. We, um, 
the only injury I remember, like, well, probably not even an injury, but the, uh, the, the, like, there wasn't really any major injuries like we're having now because many of the people in the Attitude Era kept on the ground. Mm-hmm. Like, like now we see people having, like, all these moves up in the air doing flips and shit. To be and, fair, Mark. And we, it, it's, it's nice to see that. I, I love seeing that. But to say that it's not, like, those those high-risk moves aren't high-risk is, is, is just blurting out nothing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I kind of blame the fans, though, for that. Because look how... That one match last night, and yes, it was Philadelphia, and but did you notice? I mean, it was a typical on the ground match, and they were sitting Nobody there going, cared. "This yeah. is boring." Mm-hmm. And I Nobody blame cares. the fans and, for that. They don't this, care really about the wrestlers. They want to see, like you said, their high spots. And this is what happens with stuff like I'm going to bring up football, uh, like football and 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 basketball. They don't want to see people take three point shots all the time. They want to see that dunk they want to see that big hit. They want to see that amazing catch. But with that risk or with that reward comes the risk of having injuries like this. Mm -hmm. And yes, it's going to put on a good show, but you're taking a whole bunch of risks doing that. Like what if somebody lands on their head and breaks their neck? Yeah. Like they're like, like, uh, Tyson Kidd right now is has staples in his neck probably still from from a muscle buster that he took. So you can't you can't really do anything to prevent it, but it's uh, you it's you're you're going to lose viewers if you stop doing that. Right. But you, exactly. you can't really like blame the style of wrestling because we see that style of wrestling guy like bringing honor in, in Japan and Mexico and everywhere and people are not getting injured at the rate that they're getting injured in WWE. They're doing it a whole lot more in WWE though. You got the house are shows, they? you got SmackDown, right. you got Raw, you got the it's pay the per grind. views. You, you yeah, work I mean, a whole schedule. That's the thing. Like, like you with work over two hundred and ninety days a year. Right. Yeah. You can cut that down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, yeah, I want to make sure we, we honestly, go. Honestly, I agree with honestly what Mike said. If you, and it happens even on the indies. Sorg, you've seen it. Eamon, you've seen it. Yeah. If you tell a good story, you don't need your little high flying acts and everything. You get more of a story that that crowd's into. They're not worried about Jimmy, Joey, and Pete flying out the ring onto each other. Yeah, and and I think that's the. Mo- I, I'd argue with like the the stuff with like last night with the this is morning champs aren't really because like they weren't doing like giant high spots or like moon salts or anything like that. I think it was more from a fact that it was a boring story because we've seen like Dean Ambrose and Braun Strowman is not a compelling story really. I think more than them not doing flashy wrestling moves. Yeah, I think it was a little bit. It was a little bit like it was the main event, and we're like, this is it, really. Like, like this is what we're doing? Yeah. So, oh, all right. Uh, who hasn't gone yet? Uh, Garza, did you officially give an answer? No, 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 I haven't. Uh, since we already talked about, like, the wrestling style and stuff, I think we also need to look uh, at the training style. I think uh, something that was going around at the start of the year when Cena and Orton and Sami Zayn was being injured, Cesaro being injured, all of the shoulder uh they were blaming a lot the style of, of training. They're they're doing like Olympic lifting, and you're you're doing all you're putting all that pressure on your body and then going in and do all the wrestling. So it's there. There's something in there, you know, that they, they need to have like smarter training, uh, because I mean you you do have a performance center where you should have like professional people tell you if you're doing something correct or wrong. So I think they need to look also into that, like the training. Right, right. Uh, Matt Carlins is with us as well. He's he's uh, he's madly preparing, of course, for Mayhem Mania tonight. Uh, but uh, do you have the uh, big question? Oh no, there's something in a bowl. Yeah, um, I love the idea of um, 
less house shows, uh, less dives um, to the outside. How about no more dark matches? I think we've reached the point where the dark match is a useless contraption to put at the end of your three and a half damn hour wrestling taping on a Monday night. If, if, if your six man tag is that awesome, put it on TV. If not, don't do it. No well, more dark matches. You know what you could do? Guess what? What they used to do. A dark segment. Hmm? A dark in-ring segment. I, uh, right. I was, it would just be well, like well, the Austin uh, would, yes, would drink beers the for Austin 20 minutes. Beer yeah. bash, the yeah. Rock sing-along. Something. Dean Ambrose oh, saws that's... things in half with Terry Funk's chainsaw for 20 minutes. It would be great fun. It would be like a Gallagher <laughs> show. Exactly. But you don't know how many episodes of Raw that I uh, watch when I log stuff at WWE that just ended with – Steve Austin proposing to Lillian Garcia. I'm not joking. I'm literally not joking. Like, I saw at least five or six Raws in a row where he would just end up proposing marriage to Lillian Garcia. Mm -hmm. You can have, you can bring in JBL and have him do a Texas two step for fuck's sake. There you, go. you can do whatever you want at the end of the show, but no, you choose to do a bullshit eight man tag, six man tag, 10 man tag, whatever. <laughs> Just another chance for your talent to get injured yeah. instead of maybe do something to push their characters. Right, right. Or, or, just, or, or, no, doing or just have TV. fun and give give the audience something to go with. The, the best thing, like the After Raw DVD, like the best stuff wasn't matches they had. It was the goofy stuff or Stone Cold having a 20-minute a, a, a beer, you know, party, you know, for, for no reason. <laughs> Um, like that, the beer that, parties are my favorite parties. Like, like some of the greatest <laughs> stuff about wrestling doesn't involve wrestling, and that's what you can end the night on, you know. Or, or you know, John Cena coming out and and you know getting personal with Pittsburgh over something or or, or something, you know. Or, or, or you know, the, the Kane Spinner Rooney segments, or, or you know, weird stuff that they won't do in the context of let's say canon on Raw, right? But you can do, and 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 I think it's more important as as a fan. Going to Raw and saying, "Oh man, I remember this one time when when they talked Kanan into doing a spin Rooney, and it was crazy. You'd never see that on TV. And, and more than I can't tell you something memorable from any dark match that I've seen since I've been going. You know, that, oh, that, that, oh, that one guy hit his finisher, cool. Yeah, like, like, like oh, I got a street fight. Oh, oh, the faces went over. Wow, that, that was, was weird. Awesome. They, 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 yeah, they did a match to a half-empty arena because I don't know if it's like this for you guys, but everybody leaves to beat the traffic. You know, during the match when John Cena comes out, right? Um, so, anyways, anybody else have an answer to the question? We do have to get on to the Mayhem Mania here. <laughs> 